Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. So for today's mukbang, I have, <laughs> well first off, I made myself these cookies, which I was originally just going to do cookies and then I was thinking about it and I was like, how can I make cookies even better? And so I made, these are lemon cookies and then I made a raspberry buttercream frosting for the filling and then these are chocolate chip and I made a peanut butter kind of like it's almost like a Reese's filling for the filling so I'm really excited to try those I'll put the recipes for everything in the description um, and then for the recipe for this will be in my Instagram story because my sister made this and there's not really like a, a recipe online that you can reference so I'll post the recipe for that on my Instagram story but this is a mac and cheese pizza skillet so it's like a mac and cheese pizza with pizza flavored mac and cheese so it has like oregano, basil, tomato sauce. Oh, and the crust is obviously pizza dough. So I'm really excited to start eating. I'm really hungry. And then for today's video, I'm also going to be talking about aliens pretty much and cattle mutilations and how aliens are mutilating cattle, which sounds really crazy right now, but trust me, I hope by the end of this video, you agree with me. So first, I really just want to take a bite of the cookie. These have been sitting in my fridge for overnight and I've just really been wanting to try them so that tastes like a freaking fruit loop oh my god so you basically use like lemon cake mix to make the cookies so they're super lemony and then the raspberry Mmm. And the cookies are like perfectly chewy too. Mmm. And I also have milk with my cookies. <laughs> Okay, so basically there's a ton of information on these cases, like my notes and my phone right now are so freaking long, so I don't know how much exactly I'm going to get through before I get too full, but I'll try to talk about like the most important stuff first, and then if I have time at the end, I'll talk about like the extra stuff, and if you want to research on your own, you can too. But basically, the past 50 years or so, since the 1960s, there have been over 10,000 cattle mutilations. So it's all over the United States, but it mostly occurs in the West, obviously where there's a lot more ranches and stuff like that. And so... The cases reached their peak in the 1970s. They're still occurring today, just not as frequently, and they've kind of moved to different countries now. The UK, lots in South America, like in Brazil and areas like that, so pretty much worldwide, but I'm mostly gonna be talking about the United States today. So it's creepy in the first place that cattle are getting mutilated, but the extra creepy thing about these cases is how they're being mutilated. So the cattle, or it's actually not even just cattle, it's happened to all different types of animals, like mostly larger animals like dogs, cattle, horses, mostly like bigger farm animals like that. They're always found facing the east, so they'll be found laying on their side and facing the east. And they'll always have cuts on them that are surgically precise. Like it's not like they're being attacked by a wolf or another animal. There's no blood ever. 
the animals are usually completely drained of their blood. I think it's called exsanguination, where when they're found, they literally have no blood in their body and there's no blood around them. So it's not like they bled out. So their cuts are surgically precise. They have no blood. There's no blood surrounding them, like on the ground or anything like that. They're always facing east. They're, a lot of the times they're missing their organs. And a lot of the times when they're missing their organs, like there was this one case where one of the veterinarians that did an autopsy on one of the cows that was mutilated found that the cow's heart had been completely removed from the pericardium. So the pericardium is like kind of like a tissue that surrounds the heart. And there was no cuts on the pericardium. There was no cuts on the cow's chest. And he said that they would, in order for this to happen and for there to be no cuts, that They would need an instrument that can cut through flesh, bone, tissue without leaving a mark, which does not exist. So how the cow's heart got removed, we have no idea because there was no cuts. It was literally just found without its heart in its chest. No idea how it happened. So on top of that, when the animal is found, it's also often found in like what they call a ground depression. So it's almost like the surrounding area around the animal is depressed into the ground, almost like it the animal fell from the sky from a UFO and people have actually conducted tests on the soil surrounding where the ground depression is and it's less water soluble than the soil that's not surrounding the animal so whatever happened to the animal for some reason makes the soil less water soluble I'm not gonna pretend like any of this is gonna make sense I don't have answers like usually my conspiracies I have an answer I literally have don't have any answers for why this is happening or who well i know who's doing it but i've never seen them i've never seen an alien so i don't have any answers so a lot of things i'm going to say are going to sound crazy this is a crazy story so it's going to sound crazy mm -hmm. oh my gosh I was so excited when I made these cookies because usually I feel like when I make cookies they always kind of turn out like they don't look store bought but these almost kind of look like you could buy them at the store yeah I think so mmm So yeah, the, basically the soil in the animal's vicinity, for some reason, the nutrients have been altered in the soil and make, it has made it less water soluble. I don't know why that has happened, but that's what the tests that have been conducted on the soil say, which is weird. To make it even extra creepy, scavengers will not go, like they will literally not approach the animal that has been killed. It's easy food for them, like that's what they do. Like some, something else kills the animal and then they scavenge on it. Scavengers won't touch it. And um, other animals won't go by it either. Um, there's this one case that I was reading about. I think the farm or the ranch owners. Does anyone know the differences between a farm and a ranch? I kind of just use them interchangeably, but the ranch owner's name was Glenda, I believe. She called, so there's this one guy who I'll talk about that has spent the past 10 years, most of the past 10 years, investigating these cattle mutilations and aliens in general, I guess you could say. And so he's kind of like the guy that you call if you have a cattle mutilation because like, I mean, what are you gonna do, call the police, you know? And so this lady called him and when she was leading him to the animals in the back, this is like just one of the cases, but when she was leading him to the dead animals or the dead horses in the back, all the other horses all huddled on the opposite side of the pen, like as far away as they could get from the two dead horses. And it wasn't like they were, like I say pen, but it's not like it was a small enclosed area, like the ranch was huge. Even though the animals weren't super nearby, the two dead animals, the the rest of the horses were still trying to get as far away as possible. And then the ranch owner's dog would also not leave the house. So I guess when the guy who like investigates these things got there, it had been a week since the two deaths. 
and I guess the dog had just been barking inside for a whole week and like would not go outside. Which I feel like animals have a better intelligence about like otherworldly stuff because don't can't they tell when earthquakes are gonna happen? Um I feel like I've read that animals can sense earthquakes and so they go to high ground or tsunamis or something, so if animals are freaked out, I'm freaked out. I asked my sister if she thinks that I should like cut pieces out of this or just eat it. And she said she said verbatim just go for it and like not cut it, so that's what I'm gonna do. I'll just try the macaroni by itself first, I guess. Ooh, can you see the steam coming out? Oh my gosh. Okay, so she told me she added ricotta to it because I guess it would help like create more of a bake instead of just having macaroni on top of pizza dough. Um, and you can totally taste the ricotta in here. It tastes, it reminds me of like manicotti or ravioli, whatever that kind of cheese is on the inside of it. This is so good. <laughs> Holy crap. I'm going to text her right now, actually, and tell her how good it is. Okay, I just text her. I'll see if she replies. So I'm also going to post up some pictures of the cattle mutilations because usually in my conspiracy videos, I just try to post a lot of visuals just to help, I guess, paint the picture. But I know that they're really gruesome, and I've tried to pick, like, the least gruesome, gross photos possible. But it's pretty gross. So if you are squeamish, look away for a second, but I will pop up some photos right now on the screen. So yeah, basically, as you can tell, the incisions on the animals, it's perfect. Like, there's no way that an animal did that. An animal's teeth couldn't make that perfect of a cut. A lot of the times when the animals are found, you know how I mentioned there was like a ground depression, like they had been dropped from a UFO? Their ribs will also be broken on the side that they're laying on, so it, it further proves that they've been dropped. Um, and then the fact that there's no blood or anything like that, the theory goes that they're picked up from location A, which is the ranch, taken to location B, which is where they have had their organs removed, their blood removed, whatever the aliens are freaking doing to them. I don't know, but that's location B, and then they're dropped back to location A from a UFO, which is why their ribs are broken on their side and why they are lying in a ground depression. Oh. This is so good. This also has like tomato sauce in it and stuff like that too, so that's kind of why it's a little bit orange instead of, I feel like usually macaroni is more yellow. And I actually bought this skillet specifically for this recipe, so I'm excited to make... I've never had a skillet, like I would never have a reason to have one, but I'm excited to try to make other stuff in it because you can make like pizookis and stuff, so <laughs> I'm excited. <laughs> she replied, I don't know if you can see. Probably not, but she's in all caps. Ha ha ha. OMG. Yay. Oh, and look at my, speaking of which, look at my screensaver. Um, my sister sent me this picture on Instagram. I don't know who took it, but I was like, I've been obsessed with dogs lately. I don't know why. Like, I've always liked dogs, but I've been obsessed lately, and so I just put it as my screensaver. But anyways, that's a, like, not even on topic at all. So, like I said, there's been 10,000 cases in the United States, or did I say that? There's been 10,000 cases in the United States since the 1960s, and there's probably more just because insurance companies typically won't give the farmer money if they say that their cow died mysteriously. So usually they'll say that like a dog killed it or another animal killed it or something like that. And the only time that they come forward and say that their animals have been killed in a strange, mysterious way is if they see 
a lot of helicopters around following the incident, which there's usually, this, this is another common theme across these cases, is that usually after the animal is killed, there will be a lot of military helicopters flying around like a week or so after. So usually the farmer will think that the government is somehow involved and that they're targeting this farmer's animals, and so that's when the farmer will get upset, or the rancher, and then they will say something. So a lot of the cases just go undocumented, so 10,000 is actually quite a low estimate. Mm. Um, so the fact that there is military helicopters flying around after the incident leads a lot of people to think that the U.S. government knows about these mutilations. Um, they're not the ones doing the mutilations necessarily just because, I mean, there's never been a fingerprint, there's never been a footprint, there's never been anything, like, that would show that a human's involved at all. Um, so while people don't think that they're necessarily the ones committing the mutilations, they think that... The government's definitely aware of these cases going on and is doing their own private investigations but not making it public because they don't want to freak people out. I cannot get over how good this is. This is like way better than I had ever imagined. So I'll keep this like on my story highlights on Instagram. If you have a skillet, you like seriously need to make it because I feel like that would be like the perfect like family dinner type thing or like holiday thing. So I'll keep it on my Instagram highlights. Um, so that if you want to make it, you can go look anytime. So while these mutilations are also often accompanied by sightings of military helicopters, they're also accompanied by, you guessed it, alien sightings or UFO sightings. Mm -mm -mm. So good. So yeah, there's always, usually always, after a mutilation, there's always a sighting of like a strange light in the sky or a, a strange spacecraft or something like that, which once again proves that aliens are involved. Like, there was this one case where a horse in Colorado was killed and drained of blood and then less than 24 hours later, a so it's actually not even just some random person that saw these lights that could be hallucinating. Um, this Supreme Court justice, or not, what, who was it? A Superior Court judge, not Supreme Court, a Superior Court judge. His name was Charles Bennett, and he said that he saw three orange rings of light in the sky that flew across the sky and like maintained their shape and everything, but flew way faster than any plane that he's ever seen could fly. The fact that a superior court judge saw three strange rings of light in the sky that he maintains to this day were not from, quote, this planet, less than 24 hours after a horse was drained of blood in the area, like, mm-mm. Um, so the FBI has actually done their own inv investigations on this, like, they're technically not investigating it anymore, but in the 70s, these three state governors got together and petitioned the government to investigate. Mostly because they were from farming states, and so... All the cattle mutilations were seriously hurting the farmers in the state and because and, if their animals are dying like they can't be as productive and so three state governors petitioned the attorney general of the united states to launch investigation 
and over the course of 10 years and 100 FBI agents, they tried to figure out what was going on or who was causing it and there was no fingerprints found, no footprints found, no suspects, no one was arrested, no clues. Literally, you can actually look online at their website, like what their case file is on it, and it's mostly just newspaper clippings about the mutilations. So they didn't really even learn anything about what was causing it. That's the FBI, like those are the people who have the most resources and should be able to figure this kind of stuff out, you know? And yeah, they couldn't arrest anyone, couldn't figure it out. So basically they just gave up. So you know how I brought up the guy that has spent a lot of his life, I think he spent the last 30 years or so trying to figure out what's going on with these, with these mutilations. His name is Chuck Zukowski, and he was the guy that I was saying that you call if you have an animal mutilation. So he spent his life researching these cases because he worked as a reserve in, I forget what Colorado Sheriff's Department it was, but some city in Colorado, he worked for the Sheriff's Department, and he was investigating these cases, or quite a few of these cases, and he started to believe that it was aliens. And so he was immediately fired, which is kind of sad. Which is kind of sad, but I guess mostly just, like, it wasn't because he was a bad policeman or anything. It was just because the reputation of the sheriff's department, like, they couldn't have one of their cops alien hunting, I guess. Um, so... He got fired and then he just started spending the rest of his life researching this stuff, so. He came up with this theory about the 37th parallel. The 37th parallel basically refers to the 37th line of latitude that crosses the United States. It crosses kind of on the border of Texas, like where Texas, New Mexico, it's like the bottom of Nevada, like that area. It's like basically that horizontal line because When he was researching these cases, he was realizing that a lot of them took place at the 37th parallel lines. And so he looked a little bit deeper into it and he stopped looking just at cattle mutilations. He started looking at alien sightings in general. And there, I'll put up a couple different screenshots that I took of the 37th parallel and different markings of sightings of aliens or cattle mutilations, etc along that line and it's eerie it's way too much to be a coincidence that there's all these alien sightings and cattle mutilations along this parallel line especially because a lot of america's military or underground military bases exist along this line too like the pentagon area 51 is along this line um, So if you don't know what Area 51 is, I'm, I feel like mostly everyone does. Well, I mean, you, actually no one knows what it is because it's basically a, a secret area that like no one can enter, like it's guarded at all areas. And a lot of people believe that there are aliens being kept there or remains of aliens and remains of UFOs and stuff like that. So it's basically just this area that's just completely shrouded in secrecy and no one knows what's in it. The government won't come out and say what's inside of it or release the files about what's inside of it, so no one knows. So yeah, Area 51 is along the 37th parallel. There's also a town called Teos, I think it's in New Mexico, that has been recorded to have this humming noise come from it since the 1990s. So. A lot of people believe that it is alien related just because no one can find the source of this hum and only 2% of the residents in Taos actually hear the hum so no one's ever been able to find what causes it but it's just kind of eerie that it's a persistent hum it never goes away for the people that can hear it and it hasn't always been there and for the people that can hear it which 
like I said, it's 2% of the population of Teo, so I, it was over 100 people that can hear this noise, and for them, it causes insomnia, it causes dizziness, it causes headaches, and so this town is also on the 37th parallel. Um, there's this town called Dol Dolce, New Mexico, that is believed to have an underground alien base because there's people that have come out and said that they work there um, and given information on the underground base and so there's believed to be an abandoned underground alien base underneath the city and that city is also on the 37th parallel. So Chuck Zukowski doesn't really have a theory for why the 37th parallel is such a hot spot for aliens, but he does have a theory about, I guess, why they chose the 37th parallel. Hmm. And his theory is basically that they, try, they choose areas with a high level of hydrogen because for some reason they use the hydrogen for energy and they also choose areas with a lot of underground water so like underground springs and stuff like that no idea why but that's what all these areas have in common so so um So one of the first cases was a horse named Lady in Colorado, and that's one of it was happened in the 1960s, I believe 1967, and this is just one of the first cases. I mean, the cattle mutilations have been reported since Native Americans have documented it. Like Native Americans documented their cattle being mutilated in the same kind of manner, but the first really documented case was in the 1960s in America, and. In this case, there was another vet who did an autopsy on the animal. And the vet found that the cuts in the horse's skin were made with an instrument that had a really, really high heat. And so the only really option, or the only really tool that could be used to produce such a high heat and cut skin at the same time is a laser and lasers were not used in surgery on human on humans or animals until 1974. So whatever cut this animal in 1967 couldn't have been a laser but it also didn't exist at the time like he never had seen anything like it. He didn't know what it was. Um, so, so a lot of people will often say that it could be a cult or something like that that's causing these animal mutilations, but I just don't buy it. Like, for example, the fact that that horse's body had been cut with a high heat instrument that didn't exist at the time, like, what cult has access to this instrument that does not exist, you know? There's so many things that just can't be explained. Usually I feel like when a human commits a crime or something like that, there has to be something left behind. But these cases literally occur all over the world, all over the United States, and there's never been a single clue at all about what happened. There's so many other cases that I could, I could get into. I mean, I could go into each individual one and name the UFO sighting that happened after and the weird shit that happened to the animal, but I'm sure you guys get the picture and I didn't want to be like too graphic. So yeah, that is basically all I have to say, I think, for this story time. I mean, I have a lot more in my notes, but I'm getting pretty full and the stuff that's in my notes is mostly just individual cases, so... I figure if I ramble on about that, that could get really boring. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you guys enjoyed the food. I know I did. 
I love the cookies. I love the mac and pizza skillet or whatever it was called. So anyways, I am really full now. So I'm going to go lay down and edit and I will see you in my next video.